Hello and welcome to a UX Pin tutorial. This video will cover how to create and use state elements. In UX Pin, each element can have several states with a different set of properties and interactions. States allow you to build complex dynamic components like a drop down menu or navigation. Now let's jump into an example. On this page, I'll be creating three state elements a credit card with a front and back side a button with an active and click state, and a credit card navigation that will be used to switch between the two sides of the credit card. First, I wanna focus on this button and add a clicked state. So there's three ways that you can add a state. You can click on the add state icon at the top bar, or select the add state option in the context menu, or use a keyboard shortcut. Here, I'm naming the clicked state and changing the name of my base state. And I'm doing that by double clicking on the base state in the state selector. The base state is marked with the flag icon. A base state is a foundation that other states are built on. So when you update the base state, the following states will be updated as well. Now let's move to the added state to adjust your button properties. I'm selecting the button's label to change it and doing the same for the button's fill. You have the power to revert the state properties back to the version of the base state. A use case for this would be if you didn't like the new styling and want to keep the states more consistent. In order to do that, just click on the element and then click on Reset Selected Props to the Base State on the top part of the Properties panel. You can choose to revert individual properties or you can simply revert the whole element. After your button is finished, we can move forward and create a credit card with the front and back state. As you can see, I already placed all the credit card components in the area where they belong. Now I'm selecting all the elements that will be used and I'm adding a back state. I'm also changing the name of the front state, which will be really helpful for later when you're adding interactions for state change. On the front side, I will toggle the visibility of the elements that will appear only on the front of the card. Now I'm switching to the back state of the credit card to adjust all the components and the visibility. Awesome. Now we can move forward and create a state element for the card navigation. Here I'm adding a new state and changing each button's color to the back visible state. Once all the elements are finished, I'm adding next state interaction to the CC nav group to switch between the credit card and the navigation sides. Also, I'm attaching a new set state interaction to the add another card button to enable its click state. The set state interaction with state change trigger will turn back the active button view. Lastly, I'm adding a go to page interaction that will switch the prototype to the selected page after clicking on the add new card button. Now, after the state elements are finished, let's move to the preview mode to see the results. As you can see, after clicking on the navigation button, I can switch between its states as well as between the credit card sides. After I click on the button, it changes to the click state and switches me to another page after go to page interaction is triggered. In conclusion, add new states to the elements to easily create dynamic components for your prototypes. With states, you can also design complex patterns like a form that has multiple input fields with different states. You can use the base state to automatically propagate changes to the components in other states. You can also reset some or all the properties of a specific element to its base state by using the reset selected properties option. To switch between the element states, use the interaction triggers of set state, next state, or previous state. Thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next tutorial.